we start we start uh, we start with the, the lesson i will share my screen thank you ruben <laughs> okay so uh, to have a feedback on your face is quite interesting for me and i'm claudio loconsola i'm a teacher at the moment i'm a teacher uh, of computer science and i was um my former um, assistant professor at the university uh, i'm sharing you on the screen okay now you can see my screen okay yeah. perfect so uh, let's start and I, I was saying i'm a former assistant professor in computer engineering uh, but i have some interest in um, in digital humanities uh, and so i, I will um, i collaborated with uh, 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 Professor uh, Salvatori uh, to some projects, and this um, this present the presentation of today is some of results we 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 got together. So organizing virtual exhibition, uh, the, the presentation will start with some very uh, with a very brief uh, description of virtual exhibition. And I will promise, I, I promise you to um, that the second part, uh, that is the biggest part of this presentation, is hands on uh, the Omega um, application. So, the virtual exhibition, uh, I would like to provide you a first, a, a, an early definition of virtual exhibition, according to Silver. Uh, that is an online web-based hypertextual dynamic collection devoted to a specific theme, topic, concept, or ideas. Um, this is the virtual exhibition, the first one. As you can see, we are talking about uh, 1997. So, must virtual exhibition are attributed to museums and archives to make visible their collection to end user, generally the public or specialized user groups. Of course, at the moment, we can produce our um, our virtual exhibition to to with very uh, low effort. So the, the early virtual exhibits, the the most famous uh, in the world, are um, some example from uh, the National Museum of American History, uh, the American History documents. Uh, as you can see here, I provide here a, a short list. Of, uh, of, of main uh, virtual exhibits in the world. Uh, um, I would like uh, to see if some of them is still online. So as you can see, also the graphic is quite early. And you can you can uh, you can see some of some of the the the, the painting I think is print the print collecting yes the painting of these uh, uh, exhibits. So during the years uh, we go uh, towards an updated definition of virtual exhibits. In fact, uh, over the last decade, the improvements to this area have been seen and virtual uh, exhibits have reached a stage of sophistication. Although a number of fundamental challenge, uh, challenges remain, of course, uh, while the basic tenets of uh, virtual exhibition have not changed, it's helpful to provide an update definition. As you can see here, the definition, this definition uh, is, uh, is by Fu, Schubert in 2008, and this uh, virtual exhibit was a web-based hypermedia collection that reminds the, the, the old definition of captured or rendered multidimensional information objects, possibly stored in distributed networks, designed around a specific theme, topic, concept, or idea, and harnessed with the state-of-art technology and architecture to deliver a user center and the engaging experience of discovery. This is a fundamental aspect of this updated definition uh, that was missing in the previous definition. Um, so uh, I was saying uh, to deliver a user center and engaging experience of discovery, learning, contributing, and being entertained through its nature of its dynamic product and service offerings. 
But why we should use uh, virtual exhibitions? First and foremost is the recognition that hosting virtual um, exhibition provides a gateway to showcase museum or archive collection that are not bound by time, distance and space. And these constraints, of course, are, uh, are due in physical exhibition. And this addresses the important issue to make valuable artifacts available to the masses while playing the role of custodianship on national and international treasures. Uh, some more uh, things on virtual exhibits. Uh, I, I, I said before, this is a very brief uh, introduction to virtual exhibits, uh, but it's not the, the, the key of this morning. Uh, I think it's, yes, one dozen uh, slides about uh, the, the definition. So after we will proceed with the practical things. What about the advantages of virtual exhibits? Uh, the online strategies have particular advantages. Uh, it's relatively easy to add new products. Today we will, uh, um, at the end of the day, uh, I expect to, to um, build our own uh, virtual exhibits. And uh, services or revamp existing ones, of course, a virtual exhibits can 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 mean also update uh, old or revamping old uh, uh, virtual exhibits in the form of adding new materials, updating, reusing existing materials, adding new learning and entertainment components, online shopping, online forums, all of, all of these uh, these things. Um, it's very important that I will uh, and I will introduce this. Um, um, later, that of course inter interoperability uh, between and among uh, virtual exhibits online is very important. Also for revamping existing virtual exhibits from other uh, person or other uh, institution. Uh, virtual exhibits through digitization rendering also have the distinct advantages to create and use electronic surrogates of original fragile or sensitive records or priceless artifacts. Um, th this aspect is uh, also is very important because sometimes we have some problem uh, to access uh, some, some, some painting or uh, something uh, from the virtual exhibits. Uh, now, uh, during, during this pandemic period, for example, we can have some problems to reach the, the place or in other, in other cases, we have uh, priceless uh, artifacts that are in some uh, museum or uh, in other places that are very difficult to reach. Or um, we have some problem for, for example, uh, the fragility of the of the record to to be consulted. So um, some international example. Uh, that are very famous uh, at the moment. It's the one from the Smithsonian Institute and the Auckland Art Museum. I will. I would like to 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 show you this example and to see the differences between the first, the early example, and this one. So, uh, of course, this is uh, like a website and you can um, explore collections. And here you can see all the collection. As you can see here, uh, we have a painting, we have, um, uh, we have, we have designed things, we have ver computer, several collection. This one is one of the interested one, uh, the most interested. This means on 3D, and we have uh, sub collections of this. And we can go through uh, the, um, the recording. This is, uh, of course, a, 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 an advanced uh, visualizer of, um, of a 3D model. As you can see here, you can, uh, uh, you can rotate, you can see the, 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 the model. And on the right side, okay, was 
so you can zoom it. And on the right side, you can see metadata. We will go through metadata in uh, some minutes. So you, you can see also uh, pictures. So this is in Omeka, we will call this an item. So remember the, this, the, the, this term. And here you can see some metadata, object details, and also related object groups. So th this is one of the best uh, virtual exhibits online at the moment. The other one is from uh, the Auckland Art Museum. The U is missing, but it's Auckland, it's written like this. And you can go on uh, look on collection. So we will uh, we, we are starting with terms from uh, virtual exhibits and about the collection you can search for collection. This is one of this. And this structure, as you can see before in the Smithsonian Institute, there is some some uh, multimedia uh, multimedia item and then uh, um, the, 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 the metadata uh, related to the product and related product. This is the, the typical um, the typical view of products in collection on uh, in virtual exhibits. So collectively they are able to display and make available a significant amount of treasures. Uh, of course, if, if you make your own uh, virtual exhibits, uh, this, this will be treasures, of course, for you. Um, but of course, uh, uh, this, the Smithsonian, the Oakland Art Museum, are institution, uh, world famous institution. So these are very, these are uh, treasure uh, for you. This means of extending outreach a significant long term returns on of investment once. Um, why this? Uh, because uh, virtual exhibits, you, you spend the first time and then you can pay, you have to pay only for um, digital space on a web server, but you uh, spend only the first time and you can uh, easily add other, um, other item on your, uh, on your uh, virtual exhibits. I, okay, Some, sometimes I, I will check you to, to check that you are not sleeping. Okay, uh, last few things. Uh, what about the potential of virtual exhibitions? Virtual exhibition has been criti critic in the past for their inability to provide the experience of the real thing. Um, this is an important issue. In several uh, in several um, aspects of our of uh, our life, we can see this problem uh, during this pandemic period. For example, I am a teacher at the school, and uh, I I did the world famous uh, didactica distanza. It is no uh, the, um, the education uh, um, from a remote place. So, uh, of course, this is a different from a uh, personal experience. Um, however, a virtual exhibition can allow users to understand, discover, learn, and do far more than physical exhibition. Why? Because uh, by adopting a carefully researched user-centered design, virtual exhibition through hyperlinking supports both linear and nonlinear discovery and learning pathways creating learning opportunities that are difficult to replicate in, fix, in physical exhibition. I would, would like to, to provide you an example of this. Uh, when you go to, um, I don't know, to, to a museum and you see a paint, uh, probably you will, uh, you will find um, some text on the, the right side and the left side uh, of, the, of the painting uh, showing some of the information. Some, some, uh, some museum are providing also a, a guide, uh, a guide, um, audio guide, or a QR code to, to be seen on the, the smartphone. Of course, the, the, this is, uh, on virtual exhibits, you can do more. You can use a 3D application, you can uh, provide uh, other information. And the, the world, I, I think every one of you know 
the the word hyperlinking, um, but, but but it's important to to stress this uh, this concept. The hyperlink um, or the hypertext. We know the hypertext are the and are some in the the principle. Um, an hypertext was a text with some links inside, and the links inside uh, uh, through the links. Uh, inside the text, we can reach other texts. Of course, hyperlinking uh, in, uh, um, in these days uh, means that you can reach other multimedia and uh, other multimedia um, resources. So this is a very important in, a, in the fruition of, uh, of a virtual exhibit. Other potential of virtual exhibition uh, the ability to engage in multiple forms of media, I was saying text, image, audio, sounds, video, augmented reality and virtual reality components on one page. In the same place, you can you can uh, reach all the information you, you need and I can, uh, the, um, the organizer can help the, the user to, to, to exploit the um, one page uh, sh giving all the information the user is searching for. Of course, uh, the user are, are different among them. So um, uh, I think it's important to uh, design your page, both from both for uh, um, expert expert user and for uh, non expert user. Of course, you can um, you have to, to to design the page and you have to think about providing information, the right information to the right uh, user. So I was saying the ability to engage multiple forms of media on one page, having the ability to reverse, revisit, translate, and read text tailored for different user groups, prophecies and requirements, immersion in well-crafted themed games, collective, help to establish a deeper sense of understanding, awareness, and learning of content than physical exhibits in fact, for example, you can translate a page using Google Translate, for example, and it's very difficult to do this in presence. Uh, virtual exhibits are therefore no longer viewed as passing facts, but an important logical companion and extension to physical exhibition. Um, several uh, several institutions uh, at the moment are trying to uh, produce virtual exhibitions of their, um, of their uh, treasures, <laughs> we, we say treasures. Uh, you, you know, in these days, there are also the um, there is also a project uh, from Uffizi. You know that uh, Uffizi treasures are too much to to be showed in uh, Florence at the Uffizi Palace, and so they are uh, making this project that is named uh, Uffizi Diffusi, that is uh, distributed Uffizi uh, through the um, the city, the Tuscan uh, cities. Um, at the moment, there is a call for this treasure to be shown in uh, uh, different cities, uh, different from uh, Florence. So you, you, you can understand that physical uh, spaces uh, have some, uh, some limits, of course, and, and so we uh, need more space to show the treasures. Virtual exhibition try to uh, cover and uh, to fulfill this, um, this, this issue. And, uh, and for to, to, to conclude this first part, the very brief first part on virtual exhibits, it's important to, to focus on an aspect not to be underestimated in virtual exhibition that are metadata. The metadata, this is a, a clear uh, picture that shows you what the metadata uh, represents in reality. It's the, the the, the, the part of the of the iceberg that is under uh, the, the level of the sea, uh, because uh, uh, metadata has always been an extremely crucial aspect for describing and managing artifacts in the collection. Uh, we, we saw before that collection is a, um, a set of items or set of products uh, to be shown in the virtual exhibits. When these are digitally acquired and transformed into information objects, a new set of corresponding metadata becomes necessary. So when a new applications such as virtual exhibits are developed, more metadata is required to describe and manage the exhibition page contents, 
uh, access information and so on. We need to design not only the, um, the, the user interface, but also the metadata. Uh, you know, you have to, 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 to have the, the minimum number of metadata to, uh, to have a, a correct or a proper, um, a proper uh, page. I would like to show you the, the example of before. In this case, we have, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight metadata. Uh, this is another one, is the ninth, is the collection and the status. So 10 metadata item. In this case, you can see uh, details that are more than 10. So two, three, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. So uh, fifteen, uh, fifteen metadata. What about the metadata? Uh, if they are too much, it's quite difficult to focus on one of them. Uh, in this example, you provide all the information about these products. Of course, uh, to specialized uh, and professional user. Probably these these things, these uh, fields are important, but probably for a non-professional user, uh, these fields are not important. So probably we can provide two um, two different um, user user experience. For example, we can we, we can use less uh, item, less uh, fields of uh, metadata and uh, leave this to, for example, a see more section. You, 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 you can click on see more and see some of the professional fields of metadata. So these are all um, project, uh, project design uh, uh, choices. Uh, some few things on metadata. Uh, the active research done on metadata and continuing development of standards such as Spectrum, Head, Dublin Core, and other metadata schemes attest to the importance of having relevant, relevant metadata to support a variety of needs. Uh, we will use in Omeka uh, the Dublin Core standard, and metadata can typically be classified as descriptive, technical, presentation, preservation, administrative, and resource discovery. Um, we, we will we will use um, Dublin Core because Omeka is uh, compatible with this kind of uh, standard. But why use use um, why we have to use the metadata standard? The metadata standardization is important for interoperability. Um, I anticipate this concept at the beginning of the talk. Because when designing virtual exhibition, it is highly recommended that the use of standards to support interoperability. When this becomes not possible, for whatever reason, the exchange of metadata information across systems become more costly due to the need for validation, optimization, and mapping. Um, this is um, a very a fundamental aspect uh, when we have to, um, for example, revamping. You, you, you know what revamping means? Revamping is a kind of update. It's a kind of update. Uh, it's a technical term. Uh, that means that you have to update uh, something under a technical aspect. So this is revamping. Uh, so when you have to update, or you have to, for example, to, to take a, a virtual exhibit and bring this to another site, or to, um, for example, um, merge two virtual exhibits. If you have, uh, if you think, if, if you design in principle a, a standard for metadata, uh, this is this is easier to do, and you mm, the, the the effort you don't need to put some efforts on, um, as you can see here, a change some of this metadata. I would like to, to provide you an example. If you have uh, two, two metadata, two, two fields, I, I will provide you an example on practical things. 
So this is a uh, collection date is one of the field. And this is the date, but referred to the, uh, the, the product. Mm? So um, please do not think to, about standards. Uh, this is only an example. So this is the date of this, uh, this dish. Of course, this is a, uh, this is a picture of a dish. And this is the collection date. Mm? Of course, I, I don't think this product is uh, the, the, this 3D model is from uh, 1952. So probably is this one from 1952, but it's referred to the collection. So we don't have the interoperability between these two collection. So uh, for, for this for this aspect, this is of, of course a silly example, but I think it's, uh, it can provide you um, uh, can provide you some um, um, some ideas about interoperability because if we use the standard metadata, we can exchange we can merge two different uh, virtual exhibits. Okay. So uh, we, we end the, the first part is a very short part on metadata and uh, virtual exhibits because we, we would I would like to uh, show you something more practical. So uh, this is a spoiler alert towards the operational part of the of, of this morning. So we start one um, saying what is Omeka. Uh, Omeka provides you an open source web publishing platforms for sharing digital collection and creating media rich online exhibits. So publishing platform. So you can publish and you can use uh, the you, you can have a similar um, virtual exhibits um, like the one from the Smithsonian or the Auckland Art Museum for sharing digital collection. So you, as you can see, uh, the, the fundamental of Omeka is collection. So collection of digital, we will call them item. This is the um, technical term for Omeka. And creating media rich online exhibit because uh, there, are uh, there are different type of uh, multimedia file that we can upload on Omeka. Uh, this is the, side, the website of Omeka, and there, uh, there are two versions of Omeka. I will go through this in a few seconds. So this is the website of Omeka, and as you can see, you have two types of Omeka. What about the differences between these two versions of Omeka? They are completely different products. So Omeka Classic is a web, this one, is a web publishing platform for sharing digital collection and creating media rich online exhibits. So as you can see, the, this definition is the, almost the same of this one. And Omeka S, Omeka S is a next generation web publishing platform for institutions interested in connecting digital culture heritage collection with other resources online. What does it mean? It means that with Omeka, Omeka Classic, you make the your own digital collection. With Omeka S, you can uh, is like a collection of the collections. In the sense of, of uh, institution can develop a different Omeka Classic website, and then uh, collect them into one uh, website that is Ome Omeka S based. So we in, uh, in this morning we will talk only about Omeka Classic. The, that is this one. Mm -hmm. In fact, as you can see here, Omeka S is a for institution managing a shareable resources pool across multiple sites. So uh, multiple sites means mm, more than one site. In, in this case, in, instead for individual projects and educators. So today I will show you something about Omeka Classic. However, um, as I will say you in a few minutes, it is impossible today to try directly Omeka Classic. So we will use a sandbox uh, named Omeka.net Omeka that simulates Omeka Classic. It's um, 
a demo version of this one and mm, requires no installation or nothing to be used. So we, we can uh, we can uh, put hands on Omeka without installing anything today. So some, some example of Omeka use. This is a project of the American Antiquarian Society. Uh, let me uh, to do this. Web browser is very fast to copy the. Okay, this is uh, one of the um, one of the example that are um, there are very <laughs> are a huge amount of example of Omeka, and uh, as you can see here is a normal website, and you can go on description of arts and then image gallery. So you see exhibit gallery. This is, uh, th these are an example of the gallery. And uh, as before, you see the, 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 the title, the, the title, the, the picture, the citation to, to cite this picture, and then the, the, the metadata under. Hmm? This is one of the, one of the examples. Let me show you other example now. Okay. Go. Okay. Some example of Omeka used from the web. There are there are some um, there are some example also from uh, uh, from the the laboratory that was directed uh, still uh, till last year. From uh, Professor Salvatori, Professor Salvatori, and this is one of the example um, of the project by Lab CD and uh, SBA. This is Italian Acronym for University Library System. It's this one. Uh, so you you can go on a on on a collection and you can see an item. So the 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 the, the metadata. The web file collection, the name of the collection, a citation, and then uh, you can see here what is what, what was scanned in the uh, in the project. I will close some of this. Okay. To to check all of the example. An exhaustive list of uh, example of, uh, of Omeka Classic. If you go on the omeka.org slash classic directory, uh, you can see some of the examples. So this, uh, each of these bullet is one example of a, a website uh, built with Omeka Classic. So as you can see here, there are tons of website mm, of collection. So you, you can uh, you, you can take some you can you can take one we go one of these this is from Bogota the Ministry of Colombian Republic and I don't, I don't know if yeah when you show, when you show the the sites. the sites. Yeah. Enlarge the screen because the uh, uh, picture real is small. Or ah, okay. 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 Maybe, maybe. Okay. So I, I don't think this is a true, a true use <laughs> of Omeka. I was particularly. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, I don't. I was not so. Uh, I take another one. We will try with another one. Okay, this is the the example. You can see the the the, the pictures. It's not well well structured. I think. No. Okay. Okay. 
you can see here the the the, the, the picture the the metadata and so it, this is very very is a very simple uh, setup of uh, Omega very close okay um, then I said to you that there is no uh, um, installation today but it, if someone would like to install your the, the Omeka Classic, these are the system requirements for Omeka installation. So, uh, of course, you, you need a web browser or you can simulate your web browser with XAMPP or uh, some uh, kind of software. Uh, you, you need a Linux operating system, Apache HTTP server, uh, MySQL version uh, 5 or greater, and PHP scripting language version 5.4 uh, or higher, uh, and image magic image manipulation software. So these are the, the, the basic system requirements for Omega installation. Uh, I, I didn't ask you before uh, which, um, which education you have uh, at university. C can you please uh, write on the, on the chat which, which kind of uh, education you have? Uh, I, I don't know if you are a computer scientist or a digital uh, human, um, digital humanity specialist. <clears throat> Not all together, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I, I think classical philology wins uh, yeah, art and archaeology because I, I, I need to understand uh, uh, which kind of uh, which level of uh, computer science you you have to 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 better um, explain some aspects of computer science. Okay, so um, don't worry. Uh, today we don't uh, we don't need an installation. We we will work on a, a website directly, and you will uh, co uh, we you will build your own collection by your own uh, without any problem. Okay, perfect. Thank you a lot. So uh, you you can if you like omeka.net you can then pass to omeka classic and make the, the this kind of uh, installation. So the the access to the omeka account after the installation of the web server uh, you will uh, you will see this one this uh, admin access. Uh, to to the page and of course the the page will ask you the username the password uh, and then you can log in the, uh, this as you can see here this is the name of the project you will have in omega uh, classic this is the typical dashboard uh, I would like to show you a real example I, I prepared before. This is a project by um, by LabCD, and uh, I will participate to this project with uh, Professor Salvatori. And it, this is the Archivico Digitale. This is an archive of the historical um, a digital archive of the historical archive of Vico Pisano. This is near to to Pisa. This is a, a picture, but the, the 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 archive is very is very big. This is the archive in in Vico Pisano, and of course, it, this is not a full digital archive of the real one. These are some a video from the archive. Okay, uh, and this is the map, um, the map of of the of the item we. We produced in um, last year, as you can see, they, they, of course they are uh, concentrated in uh, uh, Tuscany, 172 items, 
Uh, I will show you that an item does mean one picture. It can be also more than one picture. So they are distributed in these places. Vico Pisano is here. So of course there are more than one, um, a majority of the documents are here. But uh, when Vico Pisano was under Florence domain, of course there are some documents from Florence. And in this place, Vico Pisano is here. And uh, Vico Pisano, the archive has also some documents from other places, as you can see here. So this is an example of uh, what Omeka.net, uh, what, what Omeka Classic can provide you. So you can search on also on map, but you can search also on by free text here by digiting something, or you can, I uh, will zoom a little bit, or you will, um, you can search an advanced search. You can search for keywords, for uh, specified fields, by collection. Hmm? This is an example. So if you um, do the, 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 if you enter inside uh, the, the website uh, on the Omeka Classic, you can see this dashboard. This is the aspect of the dashboard. I put it in English for, for today. I switched the, the language. So uh, uh, key terms such that we are aligned to, to continue with the lesson. Uh, so we will have item. Item is one product, one treasure. Um, so here you have 188 items. Okay. An item, uh, what, what does an item stand for in Omeka? These are all the formats you can use in, um, in Omeka. So data sets, uh, email, event, hyperlink, uh, or sound, still image is a picture, um, a, te a text, a website, you can do whatever you want. You can use, you can set one of these formats. Uh, as you can see, is quite a big, um, big uh, set, set of, uh, of formats. But what, what an item stands for in uh, Omeka? So the, it can, the, the, the item can be one picture, for example, a poster, one picture, or a book, so uh, uh, n pictures. Mm -hmm. For simplicity, we will work uh, in the first part of, uh, of the day with one picture per item. I will show you how to put more than one uh, uh, picture uh, in an item, okay? And then we have collection. So collection are set of uh, items. We, we, have, we have here 25 collection. How can we see this number of collection in the website? I go to the website. We change the name of collection in Percorsi in our website, but it's not a problem. It's like a, a collection structure. And as you can see, there is the, the, the old collection we have. You see here that is hierarchical structure of the um, of the collection. We can have uh, master collection or parent collection and child collection. For, for example, here you can see Arte Mestieri, and then in Arte Mestieri you can search for Arte di Porta San Piero di Firenze, Calafati, and so on. Uh, so all of these are 25. You, you can you can count, and these are 25 collections. So a collection, as I said before, is a series of items. So a collection A have item number one, number two, number three. For items such as posters, so posters is one picture, uh, the collection should, uh, the collection could be a Netflix series for poster collection consisting of as many pictures as the posters. For items such as books, the collection could be the Harry Potter book collection, consisting of seven books and hundreds of pictures that are the sum of all pages of the book. 
as, um, for simplicity of course in the first part of the course we will deal uh, with the case of items consisting of a single picture so we will use poster do you have do you have some question at the moment or i can go uh, through the, the, the through the, um, the presentation no questions okay um, okay I'll, i will go through so um as i showed you before the the, the collection can have sub collection in a hierarchical structure uh, for example netflix collection series sub collection can be an example so poster number one and poster number two a movie collection a sub collection sorry uh, that has a poster number three so we we can um, we can use this kind of uh, structure uh, we will see that uh, probably uh, if nothing changed in omeka.net you can't have the uh, the the second the child uh, collection but you can have only parent collection of course there are some limits in the use of omeka.net even if uh, both of them uh, omeka.net and omeka classic are free to use of course omeka is one of the must use um, must use uh, um, uh, application for virtual exhibits because it's free and it's qualitative acceptable. And now, and so on on Omeka. So uh, I, I will I will ask you to to do these steps, and I, I will um, I will uh, wait you to to do these steps. So we we can go together. Hmm? So go on. Omeka.net. Omeka.net. At the bottom, I think you will have get started with Omeka.net. And so you have to click on that, on it. On the button. And now start your free Omeka trial. If you click on this, you will have this kind of information to be provided, username, password, a full name, email, uh, um, and uh, fill it, and then uh, check the email address uh, provided to, com to confirm the, the, the registration. And we'll wait for two minutes, three minutes to, to let you do this. Okay, someone finished, and we'll wait for another minute. Okay, okay, done. And then uh, I will put on the entire screen. You, you, you will see sites, zero sites. Hmm? So you currently have the trial plan using zero of one sites and zero megabyte of 500 megabyte of storage space, correct? So you have to click on 
add a site. So we are ready to create our test Omega site. So you, you can follow this, uh, um, the, this uh, instruction. So in other site procedure. So the subdomain name should be filled with your surnames followed by and so on. And the site title name space surname space and so on. And then site description digital collection. Please put your name and surname. <laughs> because otherwise it can be uh, used the website correctly. Please tell me when you finish. OK, done. OK, so uh, at the moment you will see your uh, website, of course, uh, zero megabyte. Uh, every one of you can see the, the website. Please write if, uh, if you can't see uh, this page. Of course, here you, you will see your surname. And then anson.omeka.net. OK, now you, you, can, uh, you, can, you can try to copy the, 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 the website here, the, the, um, here, lock on sorry, or, or your surname, and put it in your, on your browser. And so you will see your website or you can click on view site and the browser will be opened to, to check the website. This allows us to do not uh, buy a space on a web server because otherwise you need a, a space on a web server or the simulation on your PC of a web server. And then uh, if you want to, to install the Omega Classic, you need to uh, buy it, uh, install of the, the minimal requirements I said before, and then you can start and have your uh, link. Instead, in this case, we go through this and we, we have a, an example website. And of course, 500 megabytes are still are enough to, to try your own collection uh, website. OK. So the, uh, you made already this view site and you can also manage. Excuse site. me, In, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I'm Laria. I'm Laria. I can yeah. uh, register. I don't know how to do mm -hmm. Did uh, you? My password doesn't work, I don't know. Mm. Try, try I'm password. trying, but uh, mm. I wrote my username and then my password. But, uh, but, but did, did you go on your uh, web mail and verified the, the, the mail? Uh, no. Okay. 
but this, this is the reason why. Okay. Because they need to be sure that the mail is not uh, fake. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in the mail, they will send me a password. Okay. No, I, I think they will uh, send you a, a link. You have to click on it to, uh, okay. to activate your your uh, account. But the, um, I don't know why. If you want, I can stop my the sh sharing my screen and you can ah, okay, share. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will stop it. Okay. You can share. Okay. To share the website, uh, to share your screen uh, on the right side of the microphone, uh, the microphone uh, yes, icon. I share my screen. Can you see my screen? No. 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 Okay. okay. Now, yeah. Now, yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So. Uh, did, okay. No, without any space. So, uh, username. Okay. So, uh, can can cancel the last space. Okay, I, I I will. Okay. Write it again. Okay. Okay. Stop. Okay. Write it, Ilaria Antonelli. Okay. Okay. Then go to the password. Put a password. Put again the password. I agree. I'm not a robot. And then sign up. Okay. okay thank you. Then, no. then you, you, of course, you you stop sharing your screen. You go to your web mail. And okay. then uh, activate the, the okay perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I would like to give 30 seconds to Ilaria to to arrive to our point. In the meanwhile, I will share again my screen. Okay. I think this is your um, how, how your website look like. So when uh, it um, says uh, add the site. Um, ah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. You have to add the site. Okay, add the site. Yes. Okay, I did it. And then you have to to put in these uh, fields mm -hmm. this one. In the subdomain name, your uh, surname, so Antonelli. Mm -hmm, yes. Antonelli and so on. Then in the site title, Ilaria space Antonelli space and on. And then site description, digital collections. I, I would like to, to, to um, you to use this kind of, of information such that I can help you uh, with the, the the name, the title site, uh, and so on. Okay. And then you have to click uh, at the bottom, add your new site. And you are aligned to us.
Okay, I did it. Okay, perfect. And so you now I think you see this kind of. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Okay, and then you have to click so on uh, view site. Okay. And you will see something like this. Okay, okay. Of course, so. Yes, thank you. So on uh, the, the Larry Antonio. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So uh, everyone. Me, I, have, I have one question, if I may. Yeah. Um, not that is uh, that much important, but I did a slight mistake in the in writing the title of the um, uh, website because I didn't put the spaces, so it's all together Ruben Celani and so on. Um, so I, I don't think that really matters, no, but no, I was no, just no. curious about no, is it possible to change yeah. the title as the website to manage, to manage site, not okay. not view site, but manage site, and you can change it. Uh, we will go through this uh, now. Okay. So uh, I will do. Uh, I will do this. So Omega, manage site. I will zoom on it. And okay. Uh, and then uh, now I will show you um, how to change it. Okay. Okay. So thank you. you're welcome. So um, at the moment, this is our newly created Omega website. Look like. Of course, there is nothing inside. Uh, you can see only the uh, interface. Uh, if you go on manage website, you will see the famous dashboard. Hmm? Dashboard. That is our um, desktop to 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 manage all the item collection, uh, plugins, uh, tags. You can do whatever you want with this. Uh, let, let we go with uh, the selection of the web the, uh, the website theme because I, I think you don't like this hmm? you don't like this uh, theme so we would like to change it in the in this version um, when I will say omega.net I, I mean is a limited version it's a sandbox so uh, in this omega.net website, uh, of course, everything is limited, so also the number of themes you can use, the number of plugins you can use is very limited, but it's not a problem. For today, it's uh, sufficient, and all the things that are uh, not included in the Omeka.net, I will show you on the Omeka Classic website. Mm. Okay, so the selection, we, we will go through the, uh, the dashboard of Omeka. So we will start from appearance. So click on manage site here, manage site. And then here you have to click on appearance. When you finish, when you finish to click here, you can see the appearance, the appearance, um, uh, the appearance, uh, um, the appearance part of the, the dashboard. As you, uh, as you can read here, Berlin and Seasons themes are the only one you can use in Omeka.net. I will show you, uh, for example, here in Archivico that is Omeka Classic based on appearance that are more than, more than uh, that are five and more than. And we can also download download from uh, the website. I will show you later how it works. OK, so here now we would like to change from Berlin theme, that is the default one, to the seasons. Let's change. Let's change it. So you will go to themes, then click on this one, on season. I will do with you in a moment. We'll do these steps with you. So manage site. And this is uh, in uh, in Italian. I will change this only. A Give me a second. So um,
Okay, so now I have it in English. So appearance, and of course, you have to click on use this theme. Of, uh, at the moment I have a season themes, but use this theme. And so it changed. You have, I think you have uh, at the moment this one. So you go on uh, seasons, use these themes, and then, and then configure theme. Okay, you will have this, um, this window. Mm. So now you can change some details on the theme. Uh, remember, at the end of your changes, you have to save changes. That is the button, save changes. You, If you don't uh, save the changes, you will lose your, um, you will lose your uh, changes on this window. So for the moment, we will only see these appearance settings uh, that are also other uh, appearance. As you can see here, there, is, uh, there are themes, navigation and settings. At the moment, we will see only themes. Later, we will see also the other one. So you can choose a style sheet. Um, the style is winter, spring, autumn, uh, summer, night. We use, for example, we will leave winter at the moment. You can uh, you can choose also a logo file. Uh, you can put the, the a footer uh, in the web page. That is the, the the part of the bottom of the web page. You can display the copyright. You can do some uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we need only to change the theme. So please save changes, and you will see that your website uh, appearance will change. Try it and uh, make F5 on your keyboard and you will see your uh, page updating. It, does it work? Not for me. Uh, you are? Uh, Martin Critelli. Ah, Martin, okay. Martin, uh, is it not working for you? No, I changed. Would, would you like yeah, to share the that, uh, the team is uh, seasons, but the dashboard is uh, the same as uh, the Berlin uh, team. Uh, but the dashboard is the same one. Uh, oh. You uh, you need to you need to to go to the website. Oh, okay, sorry. So uh, probably it's better to uh, for you to 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 leave your website. In the, in the web browser, such such that you can, uh, such that you can uh, do F5. So if uh, I will change again into Berlin at the moment. So for for example, to to show you, I will go to Berlin. So use these themes. Okay, I will go here F5 on your keyboard or update, and you will see. The Berlin. I will change again. Seasons. Okay. F5. Seasons. It's okay for you now? Yes. Okay. I have Thank you. problems. I have problems too. Uh, please say your name because otherwise uh, it's yes. quite difficult. Yes, okay. I'm Yasmin. I'm Yasmin. I okay. don't know if you can see. It. Okay. Um, okay. I have. Uh, mm, it doesn't uh, save changes. Uh, I don't know why. Would you like to show me? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, oh, uh, I think that I can't uh, um, share my screen because I'm on uh, browser. Mm. Uh, I don't know why. Okay, so describe me the what does it do? Mm. Maybe because I have to choose a logo. No, 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 no. no the, the, uh, of, at the moment, you can also. Uh, not to click on save changes. Okay. If if you if you do if you did before 
uh, use these themes, you will uh, you will see directly the um, the, the website appearance change. Okay, and okay, uh, it says the theme settings were successfully successfully saved, so it's okay. okay. Well done. Okay. You go on the website on the, your browser and you press F five or update the website, and you will see your appearance change. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think it's working now. Yes. Yes, it's working. Okay, Thank you. <laughs> okay. This is the new website appearance. Hmm? It's quite interesting to work with Omeka, not alone. If you need to do a group work, you can also uh, set up the users. For example, you are making a, a group work uh, about the digital uh, collection of uh, your pictures because probably you are um, a, pho a photographer. And so you need uh, some, some help from others. So you can um, you can change the um, the group work. So if you go to users on the on the dashboard, users here uh, on the right of appearance, this can help you with uh, the group work. So at the moment, you as you can see, there is only one person that is me uh, working on this website. But I can invite a new user. For example, I would like to invite uh, Ruben to work with me. So I put his mail inside here and then I, I can select the role. Hmm? So uh, the role are super, admin, researcher and contributor. The main uh, difference are between uh, super and admin and uh, contributor. So contributor can change the, uh, the, the uh, can change anything from the dashboard hmm? so can only put other uh, item on the, your website hmm? so if you add someone i would i would not like to to add someone at the moment for privacy reason your mail are your are your mail but if you add some some of the other if you are friends you can try it and you will see here the complete list of um, the users of this website OK, so th this is already uh, already prepared for you by Omeka team. Then need to change the initial settings. This is uh, the, the question from Ruben you know, or before. Uh, I, I, I have some I put, mm, I put some mistakes. Uh, I have some mistakes on uh, on the website title, so I can change it where I have to go to settings the, of the dashboard it is here so uh, as you can see here here we are uh, explaining all of these three um, selection and this is the main this is the site title so if you need to put some spaces uh, you can uh, uh, work here and this is the site description here there are all the uh, things we we put we set at the beginning so if someone needs to change it can can change it now excuse me can i, can I make a question where yeah. you can see the um, uh the site description in the website uh you mean uh, you mean um, on on, the, on this website? On this website, yes. Yeah, I, I think when you search for it, you can you can you can see the the site description. When you search for the website, for example, if I search for um, I don't know, please. And here you can see the the description, the website. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other question or are you are you OK with your title, with your settings? All of you. 
Okay, Ruben, did you finish? Yes. Okay, perfect. Let's go on, and I think in um, ten minutes we will make a a, a break, eh? uh, such that you can uh, search also for other things uh, uh, if you are curious about. So, uh, other other item of settings window. So the general one can uh, can help us to correct the initial mistakes. Then the search, the search one uh, can help us to search record types. So you can choose if um, in searching you can, um, sorry, during search you can search some, uh, for example, free text where in item, in file, and in collection. Of course, these are the default ones. Because, for example, if I would like only to search for directly for items, I will uh, um, switch off the file and the collection. And so e uh, Omeka will search for, uh, I don't know, uh, painting mm, only in item metadata and not in collection metadata. However, it's, it's good to, to leave uh, the default one that is item, file, and collection. So your search. Uh, we go through all the metadata. Um, an important thing is that both item and collection have metadata. And this can uh, help us to for searching purposes or to describing purposes. Um, then we will introduce uh, briefly Dublin Core, the use of Dublin Core inside, and then we will make a pause, a break. So Dublin Core, uh, I said before, is a metadata system consisting of a core of essential elements for describing any digital materials, so videos, images, web pages, etc., as well as physical resources, such as books or CDs and objects, such as artworks uh, via internet. So in the, the third one is element sets. Element sets, yeah. And we will use Dublin Core. Dublin Core is a standard for metadata of, um, of products. And uh, more information are available or in English on uh, the website of DublinCore.org. Probably the, the most of you knows uh, Dublin Core, I think. Do you know Dublin Core standard? No one knows. OK, no problem. So um, on the Dublin Core website, you can search uh, someone wrote. Uh, yes, OK. Lucia Ruggeri knows it. Yes, someone knows it. However, you can um, you can see on uh, DublinCore.org. These are in English. Uh, the metadata initiative that uh, help the interoperability between uh, archives. Um, this is in Italian, this one. Uh, I will put also this one on, um, on the chat. Oh, <laughs> it's quite big. Okay. <laughs> OK, it's a, a, a unique link that you, you can uh, search for it later. The Dublin Core Metadata Standard uh, is an ISO standard um, constitutes an, uh, of an official recognition for the use of Dublin Core sets um, since uh, 1995. And has been translated into over 20 languages and used all over the world to integrate different types of information. The, um, the important things in um, Omeka is that Dublin Core, uh, Dublin Core metadata have um, a, a fixed, a fixed uh, name. In the sense that you have, um, here you have some example. Okay, uh, for example, title mm, or subject description that are the minimum number of metadata uh, that can be used to describe an item. So um, the, the important thing is that with Omeka, you can change the translation and you can personalize the translation, and I will show you how, uh, of this Dublin Core metadata. Of course, the name 
of the metadata, the, the original name will remain the same. So the website will work with this kind of metadata and you will see the translation you prefer on the website. So the interoperability is, um, is, is OK because, of course, you will not change title, subject, this, this name, the original name, but we will change only the visualization on, uh, on the website. Uh, other information that are also here, documents, it's the same site, website of Dublin Core. Hmm? Uh, some uh, example of metadata. So um, element sets, I will close this, I will close this one. Uh, I can edit this metadata. And so we, we, here we have all the metadata of Dublin Core. Hmm? Title, subject, description, creator, source, publisher, date, contributor, rights, and, and so on. Hmm? Uh, to coverage. In, um, this is the uh, order in which the, the metadata will be shown on the website. I will go on Archivio, Archivico Digitale, and uh, I will take one of this, one of this item. This is the collection. Okay, so as you can see here, now, now I put it in English, uh, so you will see the original name. In Italian, you, you can see the translation I decided to put inside the website. So this is the title, temporal coverage, date, special coverage, and so on. So here you can, uh, you can, um, you can um, select the order. For example, if I would like to see before the description, before the subject, you can click on it and move through the uh, through the website. If I put like this, if the, the metadata will be present, for example, if I, I don't put any description, of course, uh, this metadata field, you, you, you will not see this metadata field. Otherwise, uh, it will be in the second position. Mm -hmm. If you want to put description here, you can move. And so you can do this for every uh, field. At the moment, you you can uh, you can move you can try to move and to change some uh, some of this feed without any problem. Try it. It's quite simple to customize the the the, um, the order of the fields. And then, of course, you you need to if you change it, you need to save changes uh, before uh, exiting. OK, so I, I think it's mom the moment for a break hmm? before you before going on. Of course, at the, at the end, I can uh, I can give you the, the slides to, to to be used for for your interest. Um, Erika, I don't know if you are if you can listen. Otherwise, I will send a, a message.
Ah, okay. Okay. Okay, so we, we will have a break. Uh, I will give you some uh, extra minutes of break uh, to if someone is interested in uh, knowing some more on uh, um, Dublin Core, can, can search for it on, uh, on this website or on the DublinCore.org. Uh, so we will see you here at 11 o'clock. Is it okay for you? So you will have a break and then you can focus on this. Okay. I will uh, I will not show anymore my 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 screen, and I will uh, switch off the microphone, the webcam. So eleven, I will I will write also. Here.